Hi, and welcome to another fabulous episode of Thyroid Refresh TV, a podcast dedicated to helping you live a thyroid healthy lifestyle. We're so glad to be back with you again. I'm Dana Bowman. And I'm Jenny Maher, and we are the dynamic duo behind Thyroid Refresh and Thyroid 30. And we're so thrilled to be here today with our friend and amazing thyroid expert, Angela Brown, to talk about hair tissue mineral analysis. We're going to be referring to it a lot during the show as HTMA for short. So how is HTMA helpful for thyroid patients? I'm so excited to learn more about this. Um, so welcome to the show, Angela. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me. I love, I love chatting with you guys. <laughs> for those of uh, you guys who do not know too much about Angela, I wanted to tell you a little bit about her. She is a thyroid expert and holistic health coach from St. Louis, Missouri. She's a certified functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. Woo! That's a mouthful. <laughs> FDNP, a licensed physical therapist, as well as a personal trainer. She specializes in advanced testing and thyroid healing for women. She has recovered from hypothyroidism herself after being diagnosed at the age of 22. And she used her experience in education to create her program called the Sexy Thyroid Solution to help women no longer suffer like she did and get to the root cause of their health issues. Well, we're so excited to be here with Angela today because uh, we've been working with Angela for a little while. She has um, done some work with us on weight loss because weight loss is really one of her specialties. And what we got into in this conversation with her about, you know, the struggles thyroid patients have losing weight is how helpful hair tissue mineral analysis can be. Um, and you talk about that a little bit in the article you have up on Thyroid Refresh called Why Can't I Lose Weight? So we'll be sure and link to that article in the show notes. You guys can sort of dive into that deeper there. Um, but yeah, HTMA is amazing. This is something that Dana and I have both done. And it's really so detailed I think almost more than anything else I've personally ever done. And it isn't just about your levels of things like heavy metals and minerals. It's also about the ratios. How are all those, you know, all those little factors in your body, how are they playing with one another? Are they maybe tilting the scales one way or another into some sort of imbalance that can be causing a lot of different thyroid symptoms, not just weight loss, but you know, fatigue, hair loss, sleep issues, metabolic stuff. There's so many things this can show us. So we're so um, curious to get into this juicy and really empowering topic, I think, for people, Angela. But before we dive in, can you maybe just tell us a little bit about your thyroid story and how you ended up where you are today? Sure, sure. So, um, I, 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 she said it before I was diagnosed, um, at 22, I'm 43 now, almost 44. Um, and, uh, when I was first diagnosed, um, many years ago, it was pretty frustrating because, um, now I'm, I'm looking back at things. I, they pretty much only checked my TSH on my blood panel. And I looked back and I, that TSH was the only thing they checked for about 12 years. <laughs> um, and I just kept getting, um, my dose of medicine kept getting increased. Um, I was put on Synthroid, wasn't really working. I had gone to so many doctors. I was in and out of doctors um, trying to like figure out, well, why isn't this medicine working? And I get to the next one and they increase my medicine even further. Um, and uh, I still felt re- really lousy and nothing was working. So they increased it again. And it was this like dog and pony show, I swear for, for many, many years. And um, I, at that time, I was just only practicing physical therapy, but um, I knew enough to know, you know, ha- having been in the medical field, that like there need there has to be something else, or there this this just can't be the answer. Um, and I would feel okay for maybe a couple of weeks, and then I'd be back to square one again. So um, that's when I decided that you know what I need to probably start digging in and finding different answers. So um, I did find a doctor where I live here in St. Louis that started doing a little bit more in depth blood panel on me, um, a, a pretty much a full thyroid blood panel. And, um, you know, 
I got a little bit more answers. Um, it was very helpful. They changed my medicine, but I still, you know, did that for several years. It just still wasn't cutting it. I still just didn't feel like that was the thing still that was helping me. I still would kind of revert backwards. So, um, I, uh, having all these health issues then, then, you know, because of all that going off my thyroid, I started having all kinds of other issues. So I was having digestion issues. I was having hormone issues, you name it. Everything was coming up because my thyroid was just tanking. So, um, I thought, you know what, I'm going to start looking into like some sort of diagnostic certification or something else that I can do. Um, short of becoming a doctor, I was not interested in that. And so I started, you know what, I found this certification called FDN and I got certified in that and then started learning all about this testing and HTMA was one of them. The heritage human analysis was one of the tests that um, I started learning about and holy smokes, it was pretty incredible because I started making so many connections with this test, this particular one with my thyroid um, that I thought, man, I definitely know that I can help some people with this um, because it was such a massive connection. And when I started dealing with that aspect, that's when I saw a huge shift. And um, I still take a little bit of thyroid medication. I'm not really on that much. I was on a ridiculous amount of thyroid medication many years ago. Um, and since having done the HTMA, balancing my minerals out, dealing with the metals and things like that, that you also see on the HTMA, um, I've been able to pretty much almost get down to like minimal to nothing meds and um, then I can control it. So I can tell if I have something that's going to take it off um, or I'm going to have a little bit of flare up. Um, I know what to do now. It's pretty manageable and it's all pretty much for me having done the HGMA on myself um, and I continue to do it. I still check it just to make sure I'm on track and if one little thing's off, I know how to tweak it now. Um, before it gets out of control so that my thyroid doesn't revert backwards, but it's been a pretty big game changer. Mm. Well, that's sounds inspiring. That yeah. sounds inspiring. Yeah. I was going to say and empowering to hear because yeah. it's, it's such a recurring theme to really hear, is. to hear mm -hmm. patients, people go into the doctor and they change their meds and, and up their meds and da, 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 and, all, yeah. and, it's, and nothing's happening. Nothing's and it's happening. years. Yeah. And it's years and people are yeah. feeling worse and that, you know, of course, in my story and Jenny's story and everybody, yeah. but I have to tell you something really interesting that I just learned yeah. yesterday from, um, Mary Showman, who's mm -hmm. our, another one of our experts She's on, amazing. Our, yeah. on our advisory board. Mm -hmm. She actually is, she's doing a, a special and she wanted to talk to a bunch of patients. So she did. So she picked up the phone and called a bunch of her audience mm -hmm. and it was nice because, because a lot of them said, that was basically the theme, right. but now yeah. I, after listening to your, you know, podcast and your mm -hmm. books and your articles and things, the majority of them felt empowered and, and had changed, had mm -hmm. that theme was not, was no longer, and they were passing right. it down to friends and family so right. that they didn't have to go through that anymore. So there yeah. is a new influx of people out there yeah. that yeah. are having to skip mm -hmm. some of the stuff that we had to, to skip go through. That stuff. Stuff. Right. Right. Which is and, which so is nice, and that's you know? part of this too. Like I always, like a lot of people ask me, well, what made you do it? I'm like, first of all, I don't, I, I felt so alone. That was my, if I had to say what was your worst feeling during it, it was, I felt so alone. I felt so alone. I had no one helping me. I was doing it myself. I felt very alone. And that's my big thing is I don't want women to ever feel alone in this because mm -hmm. there's so much more they can do. And it's really frustrating when they think there is no other option and they think it's never going to get better. Um, and so they, they, you know, a lot of times they just throw in the towel or they just keep doing what the, the doctor's saying over and over and over. It's not helping them. Um, and now so they can just come straight to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Instead of yeah. going through all the stuff, hopefully they're coming uh -oh. straight to you. I mean, and it's such a simple task and that's the other part that makes me a little crazy is it's such a simple task. It's very, very easy. You do it at home. It's so easy. Um, it's very, very simple. And doing the consult and um, Jenny's done the consult with me too. It's it, you know, I make it as simple as I can. I lay it out as simple as I can. Um, and it, you know, obviously will it change overnight? No, because it, it didn't, it didn't happen overnight, the position that you're in, but um, people start noticing little things pretty quickly versus just being thrown on a medication. Mm-hmm. I was amazed with all that it showed me and I, I already, I had done it before mm -hmm. and 
um, you know, of course you do all kinds of testing, but mm -hmm. what really stands out in your story is how much HTMA in particular was a part of your healing journey and that right. point of empowerment. You know, I think that's what Dana highlighted so yeah. beautifully is that we all have the choice to like, correct, hit that point of empowerment and make the pivot and right. start making different choices, start looking right. for our support system, right. which is going to go beyond just you, probably you and your GP. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're going to need more people and people like you, you who specialize in the holistic right. approach of right. everything you're eating, your micronutrients, your heavy metals, mm -hmm. underlying infections, gut health, all of that stuff. So, yeah. um, and it's, it's great bringing up the support system. That's actually, that's one of the questions on my health, health questionnaires is um, what's your support system? Because that, that's, that's huge. And people don't realize how big that is. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, you know, I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, you know, you, they blow it off a lot. And I'm like, it's, it's actually really part of the process. Like you really do have to have a support system. And I'm not talking just me. I'm not just talking your, your doctor. I'm talking outside of that. And it, it really, it really can, can help people. Oh, it's huge. And it's so awesome to be on this shared mission with you. Like mm -hmm. Angela, you were one of our thyroid 30 coaches uh, during mm -hmm. our uh, last season of thyroid. Which was 30. cool and by the like, way <laughs> to bring, you know, we're all on this, this mission to help other people yeah. thrive so that they don't have to suffer alone. Like we did for years, you know, right. losing years of our quality of yep. life and, and dealing with symptoms that we just, don't have to be dealing with. Don't have to be dealing you know? with. Yeah. Right. So, right. okay. So let's dive in. What is yeah. just nuts and bolts? What is HTMA? Uh -huh. How does it work? Okay. So the, so HTMA is, as she had mentioned, it's, it's hair tissue mineral analysis. Um, what I, and so it, it's looking at a whole bunch of minerals. It's also looking at metals. Um, here's what I really, what, what stood out for me when I started learning about it. So for example, the, the first four main minerals on the test is calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium. So those are kind of the, the four hallmark ones that I looked at right off the bat. So people ask me, well, I can just get it on a blood panel. Yes, you can get it on a blood panel, but the blood panel is going to tell me like what it's doing right now. What is the snapshot of what those minerals are doing right now at the moment, at the time of the day that you've got that blood drawn? Um, and it's just your blood. Um, a hair test is going to give me uh, a three month average of what those minerals have been doing over the course of the last three months throughout your body, not just in your hair, but all your cells. It's going to tell me what it's doing everywhere over the course of three months. That's a way better average in my opinion um, than just getting this quick snapshot. Plus the blood panel, like it could depend on what you ate the day before that mm -hmm. could adjust, you know, like sodium, for example, if you ate a ton of salty food, that's going to affect a blood panel. It doesn't affect the hair test though. It, we're talking like the different, like the sodium that you actually need in your body. So that's one of the things that stood out for me was I want a bigger picture and the blood panel just won't be able to do that. Um, I have had people that have had a blood panel with it and I'll compare, but they usually are not relevant to each other. Um, so that's um, one of the big reasons why I really liked this. So it does look at, the, like I mentioned those first four minerals and it does a whole bunch of other minerals as well. Um, and it also looks at metals. So this is another really big one that stood out for me as well, that every time that you are trying to balance minerals out, the reason why they put metals on there is because if you have metals present, it will affect how those minerals balance out. Um, for example, the majority of the time when I get a first test back, I typically don't see a ton of metals on it. And the reason is metals like to stay sequestered. They like to stay very hidden. They don't like to come out um, unless your minerals are very balanced. Uh, well, most people that I get, their minerals are not balanced right off the bat. So those metals like to stay sequestered. Um, if I, I have had people come to me and they're like, so I, I, I've tried to do a cleanse or I try to do a detox or whatever you want to call it. And I got so sick on it. And I said, well, have you ever had your minerals checked? Never. Have you ever heard of metals? Check. Never. That's why I don't put people on metal detoxes, cleanses, things like that without knowing their mineral status. Because if you don't know how your minerals are doing and you start trying to do a detox, you're going to move toxins and metals around. It will make you feel 
absolutely horrible. And I would say 95% of the people walking around do not have good mineral balance um, at the moment. So doing a cleanse and stuff is going to make you feel lousy. And boot, especially for thyroid patients, it's correct. important and that's to exactly go gent gonna gentle. Yes, mm -hmm. because if you have a slow thyroid, that is your master gland. So if it's slow, everything is slow. So you try, try uh, starting to push metals and just shove them quickly and toxins and all that stuff, and your thyroid slow, you are going to be miserable. So that's why they really are like, this is a great opportunity to really look at metals and minerals on the same test. And um, some metals don't come out very good in hair. So that's why like every single metal on earth is not on the test. Um, some metals will look better on a urine test or some metals might look better on a stool test because they, there's different ways to look at metals. It depends on the metal. So that's why on this particular test, the metals that are on there are ones that do come out better in hair. Which um, metals are on there? Oh uh, man, it's a huge, huge list, but it looks at arsenic, mercury, lead, tin, titanium, barium, bismuth, um, copper, copper, oh, copper is a whole nother one. And so then bringing up copper, um, one of the big connections that I see on almost every single test, um, especially because I'm seeing mostly females is, um, there is typically some copper toxicity going on. Um, that has a massive connection with thyroid dysfunction because if there is a copper toxin in there, which a lot of women have this because top copper is so connected to estrogen. So, um, if you've ever done any sort of birth control and I don't care if it was five months ago or 25 years ago, there typically is some copper built up, but copper likes to stay very, very sequestered and hidden. So you typically won't see it on a first test, but the problem with that is because it is hidden like that, it's still wreaking havoc. And a lot of times what it does is it raises calcium and it lowers potassium. That is a total crap storm for slow thyroid. Mm -hmm. So on a hair test, when I see elevated calcium and I see low potassium, those two things right there will automatically tell me your thyroid's slow. This is where it comes in. Your blood panel could actually look normal. So that's why I always tell people, do not just rely on a blood panel to tell that you have a slow thyroid. And unfortunately, this is what doctors do. They do the blood panel. They might, they might do a full thyroid panel. They might just check TSH, but they're like, oh, it looks great. You don't have a slow thyroid. You can have a slow thyroid without having that diagnosis of hypothyroidism. You can have a slow thyroid without, with the blood panel looking totally normal. It could just be minerals that are doing it. And it happens, unfortunately, very, very often where it literally is just a mineral thing because of metals being hidden. So that's a really, really big connection to the thyroid. And like I said, so, so what calcium does when it's elevated like that is it desensitizes the thyroid hormone. So it will decrease that conversion of your inactive T4 to your active T3. And potassium is needed to increase that conversion. So if you have hidden metals like copper um, and you have all these other toxins or anything in the body, kind of just slowing the thyroid down. It also will feed into elevated calcium and low potassium. And those two things right there will always cause a thyroid to slow down. Um, and I see it all the time. I see it so often. And this is what, so for example, um, when I did my very first test on myself, um, when I was learning all this stuff, they, we, we do everything on yourself to practice. Um, I like to see calcium. They've changed the reference range a little bit, probably since we've done your test, Jenny. Um, but they, um, the reference range was like 44. I think they've bumped it up to 75 ish or something like that. My calcium on my first test was almost 500, oh. um, which way is it, we range. call it a calcium shell. And that basically, I mean, there was no way my thyroid was going to function. I could have taken every thyroid medication on earth and a high dose and it never, ever, ever would have gotten into the cell. It never would have worked because the calcium literally almost makes a shell around that thyroid hormone. It wouldn't have mattered. So you, you have to, and we call it break the calcium shell. You have to break that calcium shell. So my calcium was elevated and my potassium was down to almost a 0 0.01. Like there was, it wasn't even present. Wow. There was no way my thyroid was ever going to work. So no meds was going to fix it. Mm -hmm. um, but my thyroid panel was looking fairly decent at that time from having been on the meds. Um, but I still felt lousy. I still didn't feel good. I was still gaining weight. My hair was falling out. I had severe fatigue, all like these thyroid symptoms, 
but they were like, your panel's really looking good now. And I knew enough about thyroid panel to read. And I'm like, yeah, it looks decent, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not feeling good still. And so that's why I'm, that's why I'm so adamant about this test because it can give so much of a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Um, especially, you know, if there's stress involved, anytime there's stress involved, there's that connection too that can also raise calcium and lower potassium. So there's so many factors that can feed into that, that will tell your thyroid to slow down, even though you might have the thyroid hormone, they just aren't working. You, you mentioned, uh, copper. Yes. Likes to stay sequestered in the body. What yeah. do you find brings it out? you know, um, and how long does it normally take, you know, for oh, here's the, here's the rough part with copper. So copper is a metal that, and this is again, why I don't have people do like metal detoxes or cleanses and stuff like that without knowing their status of their first four minerals, because you will, you can start moving copper. Copper is nasty when you start moving it abruptly. It can make you feel very, very ill. We actually call it copper dumping. It can make you feel extremely, extremely sick. And um, I have had people that have come to me actually that have done cleanses and they like were almost hospitalized because they felt so sick from what they were doing and they didn't know what their mineral status was. So what happens is this copper, um, you know, starts to come out and it, again, it's a nasty, nasty one when it's elevated like that. And it'll cause all these symptoms. Like I mentioned, the copper dump where it just makes you feel very, very sick. Um, so you have to do it in such a way where first of all, those first four min minerals need to be balanced closer to each other because it'll offset the effects of feeling that copper dump stuff. Secondly, you have to use the correct minerals and nutrients that will help stop up that copper that is being brought out so that you excrete it. And that's the disconnect that I see a lot that people have done is they've like, well, I've done this metal plant cleanse or detox or whatever. And they weren't taking the right stuff with that cleanse so that the, the copper that was coming out was getting sucked up and they were either pooping it out or peeing it out. Um, that that's huge. And so I actually do pe put people on copper detoxes, but no way until I get their first four minerals a little bit better Secondly, they got to be on something that's going to stop it up. So it's not just, you don't want to pull copper out and just let it hang out because that's the copper dump. That's where you feel very, very ill. So you have to get rid of it. So what, what would be, a, what would be something that would um, absorb it? Just so some things uh, uh, I'm really big on, and I talked to Jenny about this binders are very, very big. So there's different binders. You know, you can have a binder that gets metals. You can have a binder that gets different uh, 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 nutrients and stuff to, to help absorb into your cells. You can do um, binders that attack like mycotoxins and molds and diff different things like that. So I make sure they're taking the, a specific binder, like something like zeolite, um, which is a spray. I use that a lot. I use Pectisol C um, for a lot of binding things up and get rid of it. Um, it. It's the person dependent too. I have to see what some of their other minerals are doing so that I can um, kind of give them the right binder that's going to work for them because you also have to... Be careful with that because, um, you know, if their certain minerals are low, I don't want to do certain binders that will also make those minerals go low or lower than they already are. So you have to, I have to, you have to be very tricky about it. So it depends on what else they see. If I see some metals that are right off the bat, extremely high, it's their very first test and they're very high, like alarming high, then I have to get a little bit more aggressive with uh, binding up particularly copper, um, binding that up quicker than just letting it go. But it's pretty rare that I have to do that. Usually I have to get their thyroid stronger. I need that thyroid way stronger to be able to tolerate binding up metals and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's so complex. I mean, if we've learned anything mm. along this journey, it's that you can't oversimplify what's really right. a complex issue. Yeah. And this whole, just take your you know, just take your right. synthetic thyroid medication and look right. at your TSH only. And that's all you have to do. And you should feel fine for many, if not most of us does right. not work. Yeah. And if we've learned anything in the last, you know, 20 minutes talking to you, I think it's that there's so many intricacies here. I mean, HTMA, you're really getting into some fine brush strokes and right. it's so important to work with someone like you who specializes in this and knows how to read and interpret the results right. and what to do with them. And, right. you know, this is something you've really 
uh, specialized in. Yeah. I mean, you you said you've done how many HTMA tests have you done? Have you done? Would you say? Oh, um, like uh, hundreds. You said by um, now. Oh, probably at least three or four hundred. Yeah. 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 And I, I, on myself too, I do them all the time just to keep in check. But yeah, on, on um, clients, yeah, I, I would say probably between three and four now. Um, and the other cool thing too that, that I find fascinating with the hair testing is like when I do, I, I, I do hormone testing too, but I don't test hormones as often. Hair tests you could test pretty often because you can really change things um, much quicker when you're doing hair testing and you're looking at minerals and metals you can shift things very quickly. And that's why um, I don't really mess around with it. I'm like, we're gonna get aggressive. If I, especially if I see a calcium shell, um, I'm gonna get very, very aggressive with it because if I don't get that calcium to knock it off, <laughs> it's gonna knock be hard. Knock it off. Yeah. Knock, to knock it off, it off. calcium, mm -hmm. right? Um, it, the thyroid will not, it just won't co cooperate. Yeah. Um, and that's always key. And so if I see it really elevated, I get very aggressive with trying to really get that Basically, calcium is supposed to be in your bone and teeth. And when you see it very, very elevated like that on a hair test, that means it's pretty much everywhere else. And the first place it goes to is the thyroid. And it just, like I said, it desensitizes the thyroid hormone. And so what I do is I, I put people on a supplement that will literally tell that calcium to go back to the bone and teeth. It's not a smart mineral. It's actually kind of a dumb mineral. It needs help. When it's out, you will not lower calcium by itself. You, 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 you literally have to take something to shove it back. Like you don't need zero calcium. You still have to have calcium, but if it gets that elevated, it, it has no clue how to get back in. So you I'm have glad to you brought that up because mm -hmm. calcium's like one of those things that, you know, mm -hmm. calcium's good for our bones and teeth. Right. Take calcium. Right. For, it's not right. that simple. No, and um, yeah, that was no. something I learned from working with you is you mm -hmm. don't really want to see it in your hair. That means it's not where it should that's be. Me, it's not in your bones. That means yeah. it's out. And so that's the problem with calcium supplementation is I have a lot of women that come to me and they're like, I'm taking calcium. And then we get their hair test back. And I'm like, you're not even absorbing it because their calcium is like 200 or 300. And I'm like, it's just hanging out. So, no. um, you know, that, that's just going to tell the thyroid to keep slowing down. And that's why I don't put people on calcium. Then I put them on the supplement to tell the calcium that's floating around to behave and go where it's supposed to go. And you can, so for example, like I told you, my first calcium was 500 something, whatever it was. I retested three months later after taking this supplement to shove it back where it's supposed to go. And it dropped, um, I think it was down like two 220 or 223 or something, if I remember. And then wow. by my third test, three months later after that, it was literally back to normal. It wow. was that quick, six months. Um, so you can, you can, you know, you can adjust it, but there, I, I just, it was a game changer. There was no way I knew my thyroid was going to cooperate mm -hmm. with calcium that high. It just can't. And you, I'm imagining you felt a lot better too. Totally different. In fact, during that phase, um, I was actually starting to get hyperthyroid symptoms. My thyroid, my medicine was too high. So my medicine just really, that's when I had the big drastic cut of my medication was when I started balancing my minerals. And then, I mean, I, it, it's down to like almost nothing now. And my doctor was even like, she's a, she's a functional medicine doctor, but she doesn't do this testing. And she was like, what the heck are you doing? Because you're, every time we do a test, like you're, you're almost in a hyper. I'm like, I know because I'm doing this mineral balancing so, um, yeah, we just keep lowering the dose, lowering the dose. Um, so it's been really nice yeah. to not have to rely on that medication. Um, right. I don't know if I'll ever get off of it, um, because I've been on medication since I was 22. So there's that issue. Um, but I mean, I'll take it if it's like this minuscule dose that I'm on compared to what I was having to do. I'm like, I'll, I can suck that up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, right. and you're an active, energetic person. Yeah. I know you guys have a gym and, yeah. you know you're, you got some energy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which so is like, that's, isn't that what we all want? I mean, yeah. that's what we're, yeah. that's what we're talking about when we're talking about thyroid is energy. Yeah. Just the energy and that, and that was my, you know, the weight up and down. I mean, I'm a, a woman, so, you know, I, that's to be expected. That's going to go up and down. I had drastic up and down, which was obviously annoying, but my thing was the fatigue. I couldn't function. Mm -hmm. I was like, how am I supposed to do my job? How am I supposed to like I could, I could not function. And when I started doing all the mineral stuff, I was like, holy smokes, like this is like, I'm getting energy and I'm not taking 
I'm not drinking coffee and I'm not drinking energy drinks and I'm not doing all these things, but I'm like, what is going on? I actually have energy. Um, and it was crazy because I wasn't taking things to give me energy. I was balancing my minerals. Mm. Well, we touched on a lot of what the HTMA testing can show you as far as, you know, the metals, your minerals, mm -hmm. the, you know, how those ratios can sort of mm -hmm. talk to each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, another thing it shows you is what's going on with your metabolism and your adrenals. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, how, yeah. how does it do that? How can it see what's going on there? So this is the, and then you, you know all about this. We, we went over this um, with the ratios and stuff like that. So there is a section on the, on the test. Um, the very first page is like your actual levels. And then the second page goes over, they call them significant ratios. So there's a significant ratio on there called calcium phosphorus, um, and it is literally your metabolism ratio. So it's actually the first okay. thing when I get a hair test back, I go right to that ratio because that actually will help determine how I read the test because some things can be elevated on the test, but it actually doesn't mean that it's high. It means that you're losing that mineral. But so there's kind of a method to my madness with it. But um, the, the big thing is, is I need to know where your metabolism is. Most of them I get back is slow. It's pretty rare to get a fast. I don't get them very often. Um, I typically will have a slow metabolism showing. Um, and, and the reason is because of the high calcium. Phosphorus kind of offsets that. Um, I, every once in a while, might have to put someone on phosphorus if it's completely bottomed out and that's contributing to low metabolism. It's usually not that. It's usually the calcium. Calcium is the is the thing that I'm seeing the slow metabolism, and that connection is because of the thyroid. So that's the very first ratio that I look at, and most of the time, I will see that ratio off the chart high. So, like for example, when my calcium was 500 something, my uh, calcium phosphorus ratio I like to see 2.6. Mine was 49 point something. I remember it was almost 50. Um, probably one of the highest I've seen. It was not fun. Um, and then, you know, you just, when you start moving that calcium back to where it's supposed to be, then the thyroid starts getting happier. And so your metabolism ratio goes down and it goes back to a more normal level. So that's a really cool ratio to see when I see that as well, that'll also help me go, are you in a slow state or are you in a fast state? That also helps me determine what kind of foods are going to be better for you. So, and you and I talked about this, um, if someone has a really, really slow, slow metabolism, so that ratio is off the chart high, like mine was on my first test, I'm typically not going to put someone on something like a ketogenic diet. And the reason is because ketogenic diet is extremely high fat and fat takes a lot of energy to burn off compared to like protein and carbs. So you're already slow. So let's not slow it down even more by taking all your energy to try to burn off the fat. So I actually did the ketogenic diet um, during this storm of my thyroid not being good. And I, this was before I knew all this stuff before I learned HTMA and, um, I did not do very well with it. I found out and now I'm finding out that that's why. Um, so I typically would not put someone on that. So that, that's the other reason why I like the metabolism ratio. Cause I, I really get into diet. Like, okay, you really need to stick to, you know, more, um, a, a little bit more protein, some carbohydrates, a little bit lower fat. You know, I don't tell people low fat because you still need fats, but like, don't do a ketogenic diet if your metabolism ratio is awful mm -hmm. um, and then your metabolism is bottomed out. So that's a really, really important ratio that I um, definitely like to look at because that's going to tell me right off the bat, like, how are we looking at this test and how is your thyroid doing? The other ratio, there is a ratio that we look at called um, calcium potassium, and this literally is your thyroid ratio. So all I need to do is really look at when I look at the first four minerals, I'll look at calcium, I'll look at potassium. That's going to tell me right there. I typically go, okay, well, I see those two and calcium's high, potassium's low. So we know your thyroid's slow. When you go look at the ratio, it even gives you a better idea. So I usually like to see it like a 4.2. Typically when people are getting, you know, 17, 18, higher than that, that's a big fat red flag. The thyroid absolutely is sluggish and it could just be the minerals that are making it slow. So fascinating. And it, yeah. it's a lot to kind of digest. <laughs> it is. I, this is not a do it yourself project, guys. No. I mean, and, um, and I, and actually, and I'm glad you brought that up. I've had a couple people bring me their test. They're like, oh, I saw this or I ordered it myself online, do the test. And I'm, and they're like, I, I think I understand this, but 
can we do a consult? So we do it. And they're like, so I was totally wrong. Um, they didn't understand it at all. Um, it's, it is, it's complex, but I explain it in such a way so that you understand it um, and try to simplify it as much as I can because it is so complex. Um, and I stick to the basics. You could go down a rabbit hole with it. Like everything on your test that looks slow, you could go, well, everything that's low, we're just going to make you take. You totally could have been a rabbit hole. I never do that. It's, it depends on the symptoms. It depends on what they tell me health history wise. And some of those minerals can actually come back when you start balancing the first four. So why throw someone on it when you, you could maybe just budget anyways um, by getting the first four. The first four are going to be most important. If I, if I can't get those balanced, I'm not going to balance anything else anyways. Um, so you totally, like I said, you could go down a rabbit hole and I have had some come to me and they're like, I'm, and it's like this, like massive list of supplements they are taking based off that. And I'm like, well, who told you to take all these things? So I didn't have anybody tell me, I just did the test myself. And I'm like, nah, you kind of don't want to do that. That's too, it's too much for the body. You've got to get those first four is the main focus. And then if there's little things like selenium is really huge, it's a major, major important one that we look at on there. That helps with the conversion of T4 to T3 as well. Um, it's like your big antioxidant, but it's extremely important for the thyroid. I always see that bottomed out when I see the thyroid ratio is off um, or the thyroid's slow. I typically will see low selenium. So that's one that I would put someone on selenium. Um, plus, you know, you need selenium um, to, like, to help with that conversion. And any, any little bit that you can do to try to help with conversion is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. um, the T4 I would to say T3 conversion. Conversion, yes. Yeah. And and the majority of the people that I see, they have a conversion issue. But a lot of times, you know, they don't know that. The doctors don't really talk about that. They just look at TSH. If TSH is high in their opinion, they throw them on meds. If it's in a normal range, and their normal range is not the normal range that I look at. Um, but they're, if they think it looks normal, you don't need meds. And then they just, you know, move you on your way. And, um, you know, they're not looking at all these other things. But the majority of the people that I see, they don't convert. And a lot of times the conversion isn't happening. There's a lot of reasons it can't happen. Some of these minerals can do it. You can actually have an issue in your liver because um, liver helps. There's 60% of the conversion happens in your liver. So if that's off, you know, that can also contribute. And there are a few markers on the hair test that will give me an idea. Like, is the liver doing anything? <laughs> is it helping out here? Um, so then I really dive. If I see that as an issue, we will dive into liver health too. I do a, like my big thyroid program that I have, we have a whole module just on liver. We have a whole module just on gut health. Um, obviously a whole one on hair chest. We like, we connect all of that because that there's a, there's, there's a massive connection with all those things and your adrenals, all of that. And it's so bio individual, you know, we're absolutely, all, we all have different needs, mm -hmm. different imbalances, deficiencies, dietary triggers, yep lifestyles, what age are we? Have right. we gone through menopause or haven't we, you know, what all this different yeah. stuff comes yeah. into play. And yeah. I think people just starting out on this journey. This is a common question we hear on yeah. social media or people will DM us and say, yeah. I just found out I have Hashimoto's yeah. or hypothyroidism. What supplement should I take? What do I need to take? You really I need know. to see someone and get, and I get comprehensive it testing. Because yeah. otherwise you're pretty much throwing a handful of darts at the right. wall. And right. we don't want to do that. We want no. to take the dart and aim and hit the and bullseye and, yeah. so that the money, time, energy you're spending yeah. is actually going to work right. for you and, and be right for your body yeah. and not do more harm than good. Right. Well, you, you know? can make yourself worse. And that's the, yes. that's the key that I, you know, and a lot of people will willy nilly just go on things or, oh, I just saw this latest thyroid supplement. Um, on TV, so I'm going to start taking it, and it has calcium in it. Well, calcium you can't you can't increase that calcium um, if you have a slow thyroid, and so a lot of thyroid like combo products they all have calcium in them, which drives me crazy. Um, but that you know th that's why I'm like I don't willy nilly think that it's smart to just go on supplements without like first of all doing your research, but you should always work with a practitioner for that. Um, you know, things like fish oil, probiotics, stuff like that, like your basics, like that's a different story. But when you're really talking about minerals, nutrients, things like that, that's a whole nother can of worms. Like you don't want to just, and it, it's like you said, you're literally just, some of it, you're just peeing out and you're wasting your money. But secondly, you could be, you could be like creating a storm that's making things worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much, Angela. Yeah. This has been totally fascinating. Yeah. Do yeah. you have any other takeaways for the listeners today before we wrap it up? Um, I so I the, the big thing that I always try when I whenever I talk to um, a client right off the bat is to always remember first of all that it it this did not get here in one day. So you have to be very patient. Sometimes people actually do feel worse before they feel better. Um, it depends on how bad of a state they're in um, with the minerals, with the metals and all those things. But um, you, you, for one, you have to be patient, but you have to just really remember that it, it did not happen overnight. So it, you have to be super, super patient. Um, and the other thing, like I said, sometimes people will feel a little bit worse before they feel better. And that's just because your body's like, I don't, I don't, uh, it doesn't understand what you're trying to do to it. Um, so it does take a lot of patience. I have been there. It's very frustrating. You, you just like, you want to throw in the towel, but I always remind people you are not alone. Like there are so many women out here that have to deal with this all the time, day in and day out. And I've been there myself. Um, you guys have been there and it's, it can become very frustrating and you do feel alone and it's, it's just not the case. And so support, support, support. I always tell people, I'm like, you have to have support. And if your spouse won't support you, then you better find someone that will, it could be your sister. It could be your best friend, whatever, but you have to have Diary somebody. 30. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and that, research, I'm telling yeah, you. I mean, that's, that's kind of what we it's, specialize it's in is creating that, that support great. system, people yep. who get it because yep. it's so comforting to know other people yep. are on this path too. Like some, we talk about things like something that maybe is sound as seemingly simple as yeah. optimizing your meds, getting on right. the right meds at the right, right. dosage. Um, that could be a year or two it process. It take a long time. And that's why I'm very, yeah. I'm very straight with my clients. And that's what I tell them. I said, I'm just going to be straight with you. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Like, oh, you're going to feel better right now. Um, I do. I'm straight with them. Like, this is a long journey. You have to be in this for the long haul. You have to be patient. But what, you know, and I just remind them, what do you want to get out of this? You know, I want my energy back or I want to be able to lose weight or I want to feel, you know, like I can chase after my kids or whatever. I'm like, mm -hmm. then you remember that that's your goal, but it, it, you have to be yeah. patient that this is going to take time, but you've got, you've got to have that support system. And, and um, you want long-term optimal yes. health. Yes. You know, it's not, you don't want that band aid, And that's what a lot, well, yeah. and, and you know, a lot of people think that, that, you know, they take the thyroid meds, it's going to all go away. And typically thyroid meds is typically not going to be enough. Unfortunately, sometimes it is, it's pretty rare that it is, but I'm like, you know, you don't want a band aid. You don't, this is going to keep coming back. If you throw a band aid on it, you need to find out what else underlying is causing that so that you don't keep going back to this. Yeah. Good advice. Thank you so much, Angela. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for being here with us today. And thank you to our listeners for joining us. Um, for any of you who are curious to learn more about HTMA or about Angela and her work, or who, if any of you want to work with her or get HTMA done with her, you can find her online at AngelaBrown.org. And she's got a great freebie there too um, on the five causes of hypothyroidism really in-depth, juicy freebie for you guys. So uh, AngelaBrown.org. Thank you all for joining us for another yeah. episode of Thyroid you, Refresh TV. Yeah, so great to see you again and have yes, you here. Um, if you would like to receive your free Thyroid Thrivers Grocery Guide, you can visit us at thyroidrefresh.com. And to learn more about our new crash course, the Thyroid 30 Tune-Up, you can visit us at thyroidrefresh.com slash tune-up. You do have the power to heal, and we have the tools. And if you've enjoyed this podcast as much as we have, please leave us a review on iTunes. It would make our day. We so appreciate your listenership and your support, community, community, support, support. We're Dana and, De and Jenny wishing you the best of health. See you next time, guys. See you next time. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.